Hello, STEM students! Familiar ka na ba sa mga salitang scalar or vector quantities? Sa araw na ito ay papaliwanag ko ang pinagkaiba ng scalar at vector quantities. Tuturuan ko kayo kung paano malaman kung isang physical quantity ba ay isang scalar o kaya naman ito ay vector quantity. Ididiscuss ko rin kung paano mag-add or makuha ang resultant vector. Bago natin simulan ng lesson natin ngayong araw, subukan nyo muna sagutin ang katanungan ito. Which of the following quantities is not an example of a vector quantity? Letter A, displacement. Letter B, energy. Letter C, acceleration. And letter D, momentum. Scalar quantities are fully described by a magnitude or a numerical value alone. So ang mga halimbawa nito ay distance, speed, Volume, mass, temperature, power, energy, and time. Samantalang, ang vector quantities ay dinidefine as the physical quantities that are fully described by both a magnitude and direction. Ang pinagkaiba nito sa scalar ay meron itong binibigay na direction. Ang mga halimbawa ng vector quantities ay force, Velocity, acceleration, displacement, and momentum. Okay, so sagutan natin na activity na ito. Pwede kayong kumuha ng notebook at ipost sa GLET ang video at sagutan ng mga sumusunod na katanungan. So, ang direction, you have to determine which quantities are scalar or vector. So, ipakita na natin ang mga kasagutan sa sampung katanungan. So, are you ready? So, number one, 35 meter per second north is an example of velocity. Ito ay vector quantity. Number two, 90 ml is an example of a volume of a liquid and we know that the volume is a scalar quantity. So number three, 75 meters due north is a vector quantity. This is an example of displacement. Number four, time is a scalar quantity. Therefore, the answer for number four is a scalar. Number five is a unit of force. It is a vector quantity. Number six is an example of mass. It is a scalar quantity. Number seven, acceleration is a vector quantity. For number eight, temperature is a scalar quantity. Okay, students, so how was your score? Comment be below. So, ito naman ang simbolo na ginagamit para may pakita ang vector quantities. So, ang starting point ay tinatawag na tail at ang arrow ay tinatawag na head at nagpapakita naman ito ng direction ng vector. Ang length o haba ng arrow ay nagpapakita ng magnitude, meaning ang 10 meters going to the left na displacement ay dinodrawing na mas mahaba kumpara sa displacement na 5 meters going to the left. So, eto naman ang procedure para makapag-add ng vector. So, number one, draw an arrow to represent the first vector. So, pangalanan natin yung vector A. Then, draw the second vector. So, ang name ng ve second vector is uh, B. At the tip of the first vector drawn. So, uh, take note na it should be drawn at the tip no unang vector. Okay, number two. Connect using an arrow the tail of the first vector and the tip of the second vector vector. This connecting arrow is the resultant vector. So, kung makikita nyo dyan, yung color orange, uh, that is the resultant vector. So, represented natin yan as vector letter C. 
Number three, determine the length of the arrow with the ruler. So determine the angle. Then after that, you have to express the resultant vectors as r is equal to magnitude, then uh, show the direction. But how are you going to determine the direction of the resultant vector? So you have to use this formula. Tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. So uh, for reference, uh, can we take a look at the illustration? And then to be able to get the angle, so use the formula equal to arctan opposite divided by adjacent. So, balikan na natin yung question kanina. Which of the following quantities is not an example of a vector quantity? So, the right answer is letter B, energy. Okay, so these are the some of the important concepts when it comes to uh, vectors. Now, concept number one, if vectors are collinear, so nira represent natin yan positive if it is going north and east. Negative naman if it is going south and west. If the vectors are coplanar, addition of vectors can be done graphically or analytically. Okay, so proceed tayo sa concept number two. Use triangle method when Two vectors are involved. Yan yung pinakita natin example kanina. Then, polygon method is used when adding three or more vectors. So, uh, meron na akong video para sa mga uh, addition ng three or more vectors. Kindly check na lang sa channel. Okay? Oh, that's all for today. So, kung may natutunan kayo sa video lesson na ito, pwede mong i-press ang like button and then you may subscribe to stay updated with the new videos. Okay, see you on our next lesson. Thank you and God bless.